This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, your host for Pinoy Power Hawaii, welcoming you once again for another great episode of Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. First of all, I'd like to extend my warmest aloha. Thank you very much to uh, the entire staff of Think Tech Hawaii for giving us the privilege and the opportunity to come to your home every Tuesday live. And uh, we discuss uh, topics of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, and the big picture for us is to empower. Today we're going to do just that with another episode of Amuyukadi or Did You Know? And with us today is a very well-loved doctor, both in internal medicine, but he is my endocrinologist. I know it's a mouthful. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce and welcome Dr. Russell Yang. Thank you, Emmy. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, doctor, I'm so excited uh, because we've been uh, building up uh, this episode where you're going to come in and empower us with knowledge. And like we always <laughs> say, knowledge is power and education is the key. So let's start with uh, how did you get started and your education? So uh, I like the GI tract. I'm a gastroenterologist and I like the GI tract because there's eight organ systems from mouth to rear. And so it's kind of fun to treat all those different uh, processes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I got into this because I did three years of internal medicine training at, at Duke. And then I decided uh, I really liked the pancreas gland. And so I mm -hmm. started to specialize in the pancreas gland and did research and went to University of Southern California to learn that and um, UT uh, Southwestern in Dallas. And so it's been mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Wow, a lot of education. And I stand yes. corrected. I meant uh, gastroenterologist. Yes, yeah. I understood. Uh, they are related, though. They, right? they, they are somewhat related. That's right. right. It's uh, related through nutrition and metabolism, okay. which is so important. All right. So, um, you know, uh, I, I know that you cover a big spectrum from uh, the mouth to all the way to the rear, if That's I may right. just say it. That's right. right. And a lot of the diseases uh, today uh, can be prevented if we took the proper step. That, that, that is so true. When you look at uh, problems that bother people, mm -hmm. three or four of the major ones are in the GI tract. Okay. All and the way from are... heartburn to rectal bleeding mm -hmm. to colon cancer to hemorrhoids. Okay, so the gito niya, excuse me for just yeah. a minute, the gito yung baga niya, Dr. Russell Yang, kakabsat ka talaga importante la unay, manipod itingiwat tayo, aging gana iti likod wano kimot tayo. And um, the gito yung uh, talagang importante for uh, good health, no, uh, they tay optimum health iti sapsapulan nyo, no kasapulan nyo, iti uh, talagang kangatuang na sagrado iti salon at, uh, uh, please. Uh, seek the uh, advice and uh, also the opinion of Dr. Russell Yang. I'm plugging him in because he is my doctor. <laughs> and uh, next week, I will have the pleasure of going through that famous... Uh, uh, Colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I didn't know how to term it yeah. other than uh, telling it like it is. And a lot of people sometimes, Doc, are afraid of the unknown. And I have a saying that... Uh, what you know may heal you, but what you don't know may kill you. Does that make I, sense to I, you? I love that phrase. Uh -huh. And it's so true, especially for Hawaii and the Filipino community, mm -hmm. because in the Philippines, you don't really have that much uh, colon cancer screening, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so it's a newer concept to many people who have immigrated here and who live here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try to make these things that uh, are scary to some people, mm -hmm. easy uh, and accessible uh, so that they'll undergo the screening. Yes, and uh, you know, your uh, office is just a central information system for good health. Uh, in fact, you are under the umbrella of TLC. So Yes, I, I, I like practicing there because it's centrally located, mm -hmm. there's parking, it's uh, it's uh, very friendly. We try to create a very friendly atmosphere, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we speak all different kinds of languages there, and so That's it's right. kind of fun. 
Yeah, and you got Pinoy power, of course. <laughs> and and yeah. th th that's what our um, listeners are uh, most excited about when they ask me questions. Oh, problema, maawat ang ni doctor dito language. Will the doctor be able to understand uh, my language? And I said, oh, don't worry, just make the appointment because there are our kababayans uh, that speak the language. And if you have hard hard time understanding, they'll be more than happy to step in. So. How, how kind of you. Um, you know, what's interesting, in our office, we have state-of-the-art graphics and mm -hmm. we have iPads and wall boards uh, to uh, demonstrate to patients what's going to happen. And we're more than willing to answer different questions uh, because this is an important topic. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, I have uh, several assistants uh, who speak Tagalog or yes. Ilocano. Yeah. So they are nice. well versed. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, they are very accommodating and you just <laughs> feel oh, so welcome over there. It's like one big happy family. Yes, we, we mm -hmm. like, we emphasize happy mm -hmm. and we don't, we want to make the whole process um, easy and understandable. A wonderful experience yes, for yes. all. Yeah. And that's what I get. That's why I keep coming back to uh, oh, uh, your you. office uh, because the people are so wonderful. And then you as a doctor, uh, you know, sometimes people are reluctant uh, to go in because, oh, the doctor has such bed, uh, uh, bedside, poor bedside manners, you know, because they don't know how to uh, put the patient at ease. In your case, you talk story, <laughs> you lighten it up, and uh, yeah, not be so uh, serious and so morose, you know? I, you know, I think part of, a lot of the care of a patient has to do with their relationship with the physician. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if I may not even speak their language, I can still understand them and mm -hmm, still communicate mm -hmm. with them, and that's important to me. And I always say, that uh, the better patient is the one who really understands what's going on. Then mm -hmm. they have buy-in and they're more likely to get better because they understand the process instead of just saying yes, yes, yes. That's true. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's really, really important, your role, doctor, to make people at ease. And, you know, you, you exude the aloha spirit. Oh, uh, did they ever you. tell you that you look Hawaiian more than... <laughs> yes, until I try to pronounce their names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. but uh, anyway, you, uh, you do live uh, the aloha spirit, and uh, that is something that is very obvious in your countenance and your relationship with others, because I've seen you interact. Oh, yeah. thank you. So thank you. That's, it's, that's not, a... it's not it's not like the typical uh, doctor to patient relationship, but uh, uh -huh. friend to friend, which yeah, put people I, at ease. We we try to do this. We try to treat everybody like they're our family, mm -hmm. and we understand, for instance, uh, um, that because of cultural issues, uh, there may be barriers, and we try mm -hmm. to overcome them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially, uh, you know, the Filipino community is so strong here and so prevalent in Hawaii yes. that it's important to address their concerns directly. Yeah, that is important because we are the largest minority a ethnic group uh, next to the Haoles, if I can say that, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, we are uh, big in numbers and uh, certainly we uh, uh, seek for uh, the best uh, person in that profession. And this is where you can can oh, you come in? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's so important is to understand the background and what the needs are of the patient, uh, be, especially if you're going to do not invasive, but if you're going to do tests and procedures on a patient, uh, that uh, you have some sensitivity towards that. Well, in a sense where it it becomes uh, very personal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're it, dealing it with uh, personal uh, parts of the body. This is so true. Yeah. Yes. So it's even yeah. more important to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, handle it with care, <laughs> right, Doc? That, that's <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, take us for a moment. Uh, when they come in and, uh, you know, the, they have a diagnosis that is not so pleasant to hear, uh, do you just come out? I mean, I have a doctor that just say, well, it is what it is. You know, he yeah. doesn't even butter it up and oh. uh, issue through uh, the transition of hearing the, quote, negative or bad news. So I, I think it's so important um, that you're straightforward with the patient. Mm -hmm. So um, I, it's not that I won't sugarcoat it, but I'm pretty direct. Right. But I think it's important what a patient lacks is not the knowledge, but the perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the role of the physician is to give them perspective, whether it's diarrhea or constipation mm -hmm. or heartburn or colon cancer screening, mm -hmm. is that they have the perspective so that they understand 
what it means, what their symptoms mean mm -hmm. uh, in terms of their overall health and their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, once you do that, patients are very accepting about their mm -hmm. diagnosis and they understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it is important to put yourself in the patient's uh, seat, right? Uh, I, I always do. I, I don't ask a patient to do something that I haven't already experienced or uh, that I have a lot of experience in treating. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we try to do it in a very nice and accommodating way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really, really important. And um, uh, if I may ask, doctor, what led you to specialize in the gastroenterologist? Was there something that happened in the family or? Well, you know, I have a PhD in uh, biochemistry and mm -hmm. uh, nutrition and protein dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the GI tract is a natural extension of that research. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I began to seek out opportunities that would allow me to do science and translate it into treating patients. Mm -hmm. uh, and so GI was uh, a uh, sort of a natural thing. And plus, I have extra long index finger. And so <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly be an yeah. so important the, tool, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 you are funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, kakapsat, uh, dede ko na ni Dr. Yang itatayin, talagang uh, importante dito ito uh, early detection can uh, customer treat ay uh, talagang uh, uh, panakaawat, uh, understanding, um, specializing in that field. You know, Doc, um, nutrition is a key. Uh, some of oh. us uh, refuse to hear about the, uh, the phrase, uh, we are what we eat. Yes, it, uh -huh. it is so true. Uh, I always say what goes through your lips will become you. Uh, and uh, um, nutrition is, is very important. The rate of obesity in the United States is so high. Mm -hmm. uh, it's linked to so many different diseases like diabetes, like hypertension. And in fact, at TLC, mm -hmm. uh, we are focused, uh, one of our focuses is on weight loss. And I think that's so important. Also, if you form good dietary habits, mm -hmm. and I have a good, what I call good bowel hygiene, uh, with lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of fluids, it becomes so it's so important and can be life-changing, uh -huh. especially if you have problems like diarrhea or constipation. Yes. Very often it might be diet-related. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, I really believe, uh, because even my daughter uh, uh, is in nutrition. She majored uh, in nutrition from uh, BYU. Oh, so wow. So I'm getting yeah. uh, more educated by the facts that she shares. And uh, she stresses fiber, and yes. you would agree to that. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I, I uh, think that fiber plays such an important role. Mm -hmm. uh, the studies are better in women, actually, than in men. Mm -hmm. uh, but fiber does all kinds of things. And regular intake of fiber, and the Surgeon General recommends six to eight portions of fiber a day. So it's actually quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and all fiber is is undigested plant parts. Okay. And the plant parts hold on to water. Uh, and so if you take fiber and you drink water, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how much water you drink, if you're constipated, for instance, you'll have better bowel movements. Mm -hmm. And if you're having diarrhea, you take the fiber with less water and mm -hmm. the fiber will absorb whatever um, is in your gut lumen and you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Your stools will bulk up. And uh, the fiber has so many good different things. Um, first of all, it's very easy in Hawaii because we have so many good fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And the fiber can pull out carcinogens, things that cause cancer in your mm -hmm. diet, uh, fats, sugars, uh, and it can make you feel better by having good evacuation and elimination every day. Oh, release me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Uh, Dr. Russell Yang is uh, our guest for our segment, and uh, we need to take a quick break. We will continue our conversation about our uh, overall health from our mouth to our rear that is his specialty <laughs> so please stay tuned uh, we will be right back here on pinoy power hawaii hey aloha and welcome to the think tech hawaii studios i'm andrew lang the host of security matters hawaii i'm airing here every tuesday at 10 a.m hawaii time and i'm trying to bring this community 
information, security information specifically, that will help you live a safer life, help keep our communities safer, and help keep our, our businesses safer. Um, so join me, because security matters. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii. Broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Welcome back to the second portion of uh, Pinoy Power Hawaii. Our uh, guest today is Dr. Uh, Russell Yang, and he is my gastroenterologist. Very good. Did I say yeah, it right, Doc? Did. Okay. Very good. Uh, I will have uh, the procedure next week, Wednesday. Uh, colonoscopy. Yeah, very good. Okay. You're getting better with these. Hey, terms. I'm trying to understand, <laughs> man. This is uh, one uh, Tita you're talking yeah. to who grew up on Lanai. Did you? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so okay. I'm learning, Doctor, okay. but you make it uh, such an easy, um, uh, easy adventure. Uh, voyage, because <laughs> uh, listening to you is just like telling stories. Oh, yeah. good. So earlier we were talking about the importance of uh, fiber, and uh, along with that, uh, the importance of uh, drinking the uh, recommended six, eight, ten glasses of water. Yes. Um, the, the Surgeon General recommends the more fluids, the better. Mm -hmm. But starting around six glasses of fluids a day would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think even in, in addition to that, it's important for you just to do that directly with the fiber intake mm -hmm. uh, that you do. So if you um, take a preparation like Metamucil or Citrusil, it's important to take the water directly with it. Mm -hmm. If you're eating salad and vegetables and fruits, it's mm -hmm. important to drink the water directly Wash with it. Wash it down. Yeah, and you know if you do it properly, you might even lose some weight because you'll feel so um, full and mm -hmm. satiated that you uh, won't want to eat much more. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of my uh, female patients like to change the habit, mm -hmm. and they actually lose a few pounds, so it's kind of nice. I've learned that uh, from <laughs> TLC, from the yes. weight loss, and, uh, you know, the Dr. Uh, Lisa and yes. Dr. Yeo, yes. uh, Dr. Kai, yes. uh, make it uh, an overall uh, pleasant experience. To it, it, it's nice to work in an environment where we're all united towards yes. helping patients and improving their lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, the word TLC, we provided with, uh, I interpret it as tender, loving care. Oh, From yeah. wonderful doctors <laughs> that really care about your health. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, let's go back to our main focus, uh, which is uh, our intestinal uh, track, uh, mm -hmm. the health. Uh, take us on a journey, so, uh, doctor. So most of us are focused in prevent, preventative health, mm -hmm. and one of the most common cancers out there is colon cancer. Colon is, of course, your large intestine, mm -hmm. and it's the third most common cancer. Uh, it leads to a large number of cancer deaths. So we're all focused on trying to get even normal, healthy patients mm -hmm. screened for colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Usually we start at the age of 50, um, but they, we're realizing now that colon cancer starts even earlier. Mm, yes. And so the, the, the new national guidelines in, in a few years will be uh, even start earlier, age 45. Mm -hmm. If you're African American, um, you might even start earlier. It's even higher. So that's important. Yeah. So, uh, doctor, I, the rate is alarming. Uh, what is the ratio? Because my mother has had uh, parts of her colon taken out. Is lucky that they were able to sew it sure. back together. Yes. Uh, my husband, who is 90 years young, wow. uh, was lucky to yeah. uh, uh, be able to uh, connect uh, the healthy intestines back together so where he doesn't have to wear a bag. Yes. But uh, for 90 years of his life, his uh, intestines has been working right there for him. Yes. Um you know, you bring up a good point. That is that you can live a long time mm -hmm. um, if you take the right steps and prevent this kind of cancer. Mm -hmm. In addition, the cancer, colon cancer, is a little unusual in the sense we can find the precursor lesion, the lesion that starts the cancer mm -hmm. early, early, remove that lesion, and thereby 
uh, prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the name of the game in my that's mind. That's the key, yeah? Yes, uh -huh. yes. That's why I think everybody over the age of 50 should go mm -hmm. um, get tested for colon cancer. Okay, kung natin uh, uh, Dr. Yang kakapsat nga importante la unay nga no 50 iti tawon tayo, 50 years old, uh, some uh, nasapsa pa pa lalo da gitay uh, um, da gitay uh, black Americans uh, ket nasapsa pa pa dito uh, pinaka check up dito uh, nga bagbagis tayo. Uh, but uh, you would say how many out of 10? would end up uh, having problems or challenges with the intestines, though? So, well, intestinal symptoms mm -hmm. um, very often predict whether you have colon cancer or not. Mm -hmm. So if you have blood in your stool. Okay, so that's or one. Or if you lose, or you're losing blood, so you have an anemia. Oh, okay. Or you're losing weight and don't understand why you're uh -huh. losing weight. Or if you have thin, I always say doo doo, mm -hmm. but if you have thin doo doo or mm -hmm. flat doo doo, in other words, a, shape, a change in the shape of your mm -hmm. um, bowel movement, then those are important indicators that something mm -hmm. has changed. Yeah. So uh, a normal one would be the big, normal, round, like a sausage? So I always say, <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, ba basically it's like yeah. bananas. If bananas. You, if you wish. Oh boy. If you wish. <laughs> yeah, King Kong size. I don't want to ruin that for the. <laughs> But, okay. but I think it's important. It's whatever your natural habits are. Okay. So, you know, some people go a couple times a day. Some, mm -hmm. some people go uh, once every two days. Yes. Uh, and so the pattern of normal varies. But and that's so, not normal if you go once every two days. That's well, if you, it, it's not normal if you're suffering from gas and bloating and uh -huh. you feel uncomfortable. Right. Then that's not normal. But some people do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's just important to understand that if there's a change in your bowel habits, mm -hmm. so let's say you go to the bathroom once a day, right. every day for years, That's normal for and you. then all of a sudden you stop going and you only go every three days, mm -hmm. that's a pretty dramatic change. Yes. Alternatively, if you go three times a day, then that is also a big change. And so you have to just sort of pay attention to that as something's changing. Uh -huh. And especially if you're in the 50 range mm -hmm. uh, and something changes like that, then you want to seek medical care mm -hmm. uh, to uh, get checked out. So in um, other words, be aware and uh, be constantly checking right. of the changes right. and what's going on. And then you have to just sort of decide uh, mm -hmm. because you can have a cancer, colon cancer, and never be, never have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important just to decide at age 50, I'm gonna have a colonoscopy. Okay, and so how often uh, should that occur? The so you have a colonoscopy, and if I look inside, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have anything, then I say 10 years. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, oh yes. Uh, if you but have a lot of polyps, things can uh, develop within that's right. that uh, So if period. you pay attention to symptoms, mm -hmm. and it, or if you have polyps, then mm -hmm. we do it sooner, as often as a year, or maybe three years or five years, we'll repeat it sooner. Mm -hmm. um, remember that because we can find the, the, uh, the change before it turns into cancer, mm -hmm. we can look and prevent cancer, and so we know it's, it can be a slow process. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we decide what interval it will be. That, but, but we'll make that judgment once mm -hmm. we do a colonoscopy. The mm -hmm. most important is to look and to know. Go inside. So, you can, and, yeah, so then you can make a decision. Right. Yes. Wow. I, I'm glad I took the step yes. to uh, make that appointment because for a while, uh, you know, I said, I, as long as I'm eating right, I'm making the right choices, I'm eating lots of fruits and vegetables, yes. I think I'm going to be okay. But it's really, really important but, to go in and, and, and just screening. And just get checked out. It's mm -hmm. the, We have tried to design a... Uh, easy system, if mm -hmm, you will, mm -hmm. and a pleasant system and a nice system to have your the, the test done. The only the only uncomfortable situation is you have to drink a preparation that gets you really pretty flushed out. But yeah, um, people so, are afraid of that too. So yeah. uh, let's uh, explain the process so, real quickly. So basically, what you do before colonoscopy is that you'll drink. Um, a solution the day before you'll drink nothing but liquids. Mm -hmm. It's 100% um, covered by the way. I went to pick up my kid yes. yesterday. Yes. yes, that's how important it is. Even yes. even in the era of Obamacare, colonoscopy is uh -huh. covered. Uh -huh. So that's what okay. that's how universally everyone recognizes. So it doesn't cost them important. anything. It should to not. It have should that not. Screening. And I try to change the prescription so whatever the medicine is that they use for the preparation mm -hmm. is covered under their insurance. Yes, I was surprised because yes. normally I'm used to paying some kind of a copay and right. said, "Oh, you don't owe anything." I said, that, "Wow." That's right. Uh -huh. So so it's very so it's covered. So 
the patient, if it's covered, the patient only has to decide to have it done. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what's important to me is to make sure the patient understands mm -hmm. what they need and to go through it. Right. And then right. once you go through it and you have polyps or we have a finding or nothing, mm -hmm. then you your mind is at ease. Right. Then you can say, okay, ten years, five years, right. three years, one uh -huh. year. So mm -hmm. then you're and also you fall into the care. And very often patients have gas and bloating or mm -hmm. they feel uncomfortable or they have a little nausea. And so they sort of figure out uh, what goes on. Mm -hmm. Because um, besides changes in bowel habits like diarrhea or constipation, heartburn is also very common. And so you get in under the care of a gastroenterologist mm -hmm. and you can do pretty well that way. Mm -hmm. You can get these common symptoms taken care of. Yeah. Uh, I know that we uh, have a picture of the uh, colon. If, uh, uh -huh. Oh, no images. Okay, anyway. Okay. But describe uh, to us, uh, uh, Doc, how long so, is the average? So, so your colon uh -huh. is uh, six to eight feet long, uh -huh. uh, and it's your large intestine. Okay. And so it's the final stop before um, you process whatever you ingest uh, mm -hmm. com comes out. And um, it's... It can so that's why you ask questions about the change in shape or the change in color mm -hmm, or how mm -hmm. you feel because that's the final stop. And colon, col, the colon or large intestine, the cancer affects both men and women equally, mm -hmm. and so that's why there's no no discrimination. There's no discrimination. Okay. Uh, and um, it is age related, so the longer you go, like your husband. It, um, you tend to collect cancers as you get older, and colon mm -hmm. is one of them. Okay. Um, I was told, Doc, that uh, we, are, we all have cancers in our system, right? It's just a matter of when that is awakened or when it flares up. Ex explain that uh, uh, thinking. So, so that, that's uh, very interesting. It's so, it's so true. You know, your cells and your metabolism change over all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you get, as you go along and you're exposed to a chemical or exposed or have some habit of, of eating a certain kind of food that may not be good for you or mm -hmm. too much fat, for instance, uh, then you begin to change your genetics of those cells. Mm -hmm. And cancer is nothing more than cells that grow or rise. So they're normal cells, mm -hmm. but they grow without control. Mm -hmm. And then they grow into a mass or Or, or something growth. triggers it. Right, and then they spread, and that's when you get into trouble. Okay. With so, the uh, little time that we have remaining, yeah. doctor, how could they uh, contact you or uh, how could they uh, make an appointment? So we are at 1650 Laliha. Centrally located, we have a nice parking lot in front of our uh, building, mm -hmm. and uh, the phone number is 376-2100, and uh, I have uh, a Filipino uh, operator who mm -hmm. will take your information, and she's very nice, and she'll explain things, and you'll get a flavor for our practice, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also have nurses there, and we're more than willing to just answer questions. If you have questions, you just leave a message. Okay. Uh, mga kaibigan, uh, you heard uh, the contact number 376-2100, Parte uh, TLC Medical Center, ni Dr. Russell Yang. And again, his specialty is gastroenterologist. And he is my doctor. Happy to say that <laughs> I am very pleased with the services that uh, he provides, as well as the many uh, other doctors that uh, make up TLC Medical Center. Uh, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to come into your home Tuesdays live 12 noon here on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, I'm going to close by saying mabuhay, maraming salamat po from Pinoy Power Hawaii.